Hello, Maximo. How are you doing? How's everything, brother? Oh, I, I was muted, guys. Sorry. Hey, hello. Welcome. How are you? Hello. Good evening. Uh, very good. Very good? Yes, because all day it was raining. Yes, it's been raining. Actually, a lot of people stayed at the office today today um, because of the rain. Yes, and, and happy, uh, happy Teacher's Day. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for remembering that. So how about you? How how was uh how was your day today? What do you do? Oh today was very good. It was very relaxed. You can only work and make some made some of the house. Okay. Good. It was good. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. So, um, <clears throat> okay. What about you? Um, oh, Luis, you're still driving, right? Yes. I miss, uh, stopping in traffic. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to take La Jerusalem, you know, but it was, so crowded, man. So so crowded that I just didn't wanna. I just didn't wanna drive there. So, um, but I guess but you know the, it's still the, the good. The good news is uh, Morena uh, was not multiple people <laughs> like oh. yesterday. Yes. Hey. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. I apologize for that inconvenience, but um. And mother and wife and daughter. <laughs> oh, everything. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, that that makes sense. And, to, right? and today, and today, single. <laughs> today she's alone. Right. Yes. 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 Only with my daughter, and that's it. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, Luis. That's why uh, I'm so sorry. That's why maybe I didn't have focus in the class. Luis, I'm apologize for that moment, but. Uh, Morena focused. called here, Morena called there, and I apologize because I didn't focus. But after that, um, when we met, uh, it was different. Thank you, everybody, for help for help in that moment. All right. Okay, excellent, excellent. All right. Good, 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 good. Okay, so no, it's, um, it's all right. Guys, uh, Luis, I was going to ask you, so is... is um, you know, um, is it, have, have you seen like any streets um, flooded? I'm sorry, teacher, I don't understand. Don't understand. Like, uh, um, have you seen like, have you seen accidents or like when, when, no. you know, when something is flooded means, that it means 
that means that um it, like it's covered in water like the uh, streets you know actually i do, i don't know what happened uh, in the salvador del mundo is uh, I, I don't know it's crazy Oh wow! Yeah, maybe, that's maybe maybe people dry uh, some for the uh, the rain, you know. And yeah, that's why it's congested. Um, there uh, but, too much traffic. But I, yeah. I think the traffic uh, is about the 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 Olympic Games. I don't know if if it's correct. Oh yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but. Uh, around the Salvador del Mundo is uh, stopping. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Sounds sounds good. You know, sounds good. All right. Anyways, guys, let's get started. Right. So today, guys, we're gonna go over the answers from the platform and um and we'll talk about clauses as well. Okay. Especially um we're going to talk about relative clauses okay so which is the last topic that we got today okay so anyways um so what what is what is a clause guys what have you heard a clause all right so if I said, um, if I said Charlie likes to eat apples, would, would that be a clause? Yes or no? Would that be a sentence? Can you hear me, guys? But in yes, the yes, yes. Tenant, Charlie, Charlie, like if I if I said you know if I said Charlie likes to eat apples, would that be would that be a clause? No, it's a sentence. All right, well it's a sentence, but but it's also a clause, right? Yes, yes, it's clause because uh, uh, it's it's um, some word you need together. To, to form a sentence, I think. Okay, very good. So, guys, a clause, right? A clause is a group uh, yeah. of words, <laughs> right? A clause, guys, is a group of words that contains a subject and predicate, okay? You can also say it's a group of words that contains a subject and a verb, okay? So you got this, right? In a verb. Got it? So that, that would be a clause, right? A group of words that contains a subject and a verb. Now, this also has to contain a predicate, right? So, um, so if I said, guys, I graduated last year, do we have a subject here? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, right? It's I. Yes. And then we have a verb, right? Graduated. Yes, yes. And this, all of this turns into a predicate, right? So this is a sentence. How can we identify this is a sentence? We can do so, right? Because there is a period here. So if you see that period there, you know, that is the end of a sentence, right? That is what yes. determines that the that's the end of the sentence, right? When I came Good. here, I saw him. So if I said, when I came here, I saw him. Right? How many clauses do we have? So how many groups of words containing a subject and a verb do we have? Two groups. We have two groups, right? So we got a yeah. subject, we got a verb, and we got a predicate. A verb. Right? Mm -hmm. Here we also we also have a subject, we have a verb, and we have a predicate, right? Right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so um and then we have, when I came here, I saw him and he greeted me. So again, how many groups of words containing a subject and a verb do we have here? Three groups. 
always his subject, verb, and predicate. Three, three groups because that, that book contains a subject, a verb, and a predicate group. Okay. All right, very good. So, right. So it um so yeah, we do have three groups, right? So that is, you know, the definition of a clause, okay? Now, now that you know that, okay, we have different types of clauses. We actually have two big groups of clauses. We have independent and we have dependent clauses, right? Now, it's important to know this if we're going to talk about relative clauses because um because uh it will help you understand that relative clauses are part of a bigger group. So for example, an independent clause, right? So it's it's saying, hey, you know, an independent group of words that contains a subject and a verb, right? That is a Kardashian, right? An independent woman. No, right? So a group of words, <laughs> right? A group of words <laughs> containing, you know, a subject, right? A verb and a predicate that makes sense, right, on its own. Got it? So this is an independent clause. Sounds good? Mm, yes. Right. Very good. Very good, right? So that's that's what it is. Okay. Okay. All right. So what do we mean by that? If I said um that that um that vodka verto likes, mm -hmm. right? Now is is this a clause, yes or no? Remember, a clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb, right? Yes. That word yes. Is yeah. that yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Subject, good, right? Verb. Now, but if I said this, right, that vodka verb to likes, does it make sense on its own or not? No, because, no. well, in my case, I don't understand that vodka verb to likes. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, we won't finish the, the idea, the whole idea. Exactly, exactly, right? So, yeah, it is a clause, but this would be, you know, a dependent clause. Why? Because you need more information. You can say, oh, that's, uh, that's the, that's the, you know, that's the beverage. You can say that, right? That's a beverage that Vodka Verto likes. Yeah. Right? So you can say this. That's the beverage that Vodka Verto likes. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. So, all right. So take a look. Take a look at this, right? Now, this makes sense. That That's because, we, you know, we added more information. So that is a big difference. So, But if you said something like this, Right. Take for instance this, right? So if we said if we said this, you know, um well we can we can say Christina, you know, likes watching La Usurpadora. Right? So so now if we said this now would you consider this to be an independent clause? Yes, independent. No, independent. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it is it. an independent. Yes, yes. Because yes. Because it makes sense. Okay? Because it we makes understand. Sense. Uh -huh. We understand the sentence. All right. Now, how about this? Right. What if you What if you're walking down the streets of flooded San Salvador? Right, I bet that's how I'm gonna find the streets now. Right, so you know you're walking down the street, and you walk like this, you know. Right, 
you go, you walk like you're dancing, right? So you're walking down the street, you know, all flooded and stuff, right? Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you know you 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 you're walking right, and then suddenly you run into maybe your best friend. Okay. 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 Chamberto. Okay. So. What if he told you, hey, because, because um, I watched it yesterday. Okay. So, so you, found, you, you find your best friend, right? While walking down the streets of San Salvador. And he says, because I watched it yesterday. Oh, because I watched it. I watched it yesterday, right? I watched it yesterday, man. So now, is this a clause? Yes or no? Yes, it's close. it is a clause, but it is a dependent clause. Exactly, right? Mm -hmm. So why? Because why? Because I. It doesn't make sense. I, I can understand what he's talking about. Very what is good. he talking about? Very good, right? We can understand what they are talking about, right? Okay, very good. Exactly, right? So the idea is not complete. So therefore, mm -hmm. right? Therefore, yeah. that is not a independent clause. Okay, so is everyone clear with the idea? Everyone clear as, you know, Volka Petrov? Yes. Yes? Yes. <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the examples of independent clauses, right? So take a look at this, right? He is a wise man. Mm -hmm. Why is this an independent clause? Because it makes sense and a subject and verb and predicate. Okay. Because it makes sense, right? It's got a subject, a verb, and a predicate, right? Okay, um, what about I like him? Is that an independent clause too? And why? Yes, it's an independent yes. clause. Right, what about can you do it? I'm sorry, Marina. What were you saying? I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, no. Yes, because we we cut the year with a second sentence, the second clause. Okay, the because line. because you got the idea, right? Very good. Yeah. Can you do it? What about this? Hmm. It's a close, but what? Uh -huh, do what? Can you do it? Yeah, it is an independent clause, right? It makes sense, guys. Can you do it, right? You're yeah. Not, okay. You're not. Maybe. Right. The the um. The clause itself, you know, makes sense, right? Like it doesn't require grammatically, right? It doesn't sound like it requires more information. Maybe the idea, right? If you don't. If you're using the this object pronoun, you don't know what the pronoun is talking about, right? That it part right there is unknown, right? We don't know exactly what you know we're talking about. But okay. right, can you do it? If you say if we say can you do it, it makes sense. Honestly speaking, right? It doesn't sound like it needs something else. Got it? Okay. Right. So that's why, yeah, it's an independent clause, right? Because okay. do we need more information for this clause to make sense? Do we really need to add more information or saying, can you do it is good enough, like grammatically speaking? Okay. It's good enough, right? Um, do it, please. Do we have a subject and a verb and a predicate here? Yes or no? Yes. Where is the because... subject? The subject is you, but it is hidden. Hidden. 
Heathen, sir. Yes. Heathen. Okay. Yes. So it's it's like saying you do it, please. Right. This is what we call an imperative. And what is an imperative? That you know already, right? We've gone through that. What is an imperative, guys? Girls. Imperative. Oh, it's imperative. It's do it, please. No. But it's a an order, an order, order. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a command, right? Uh, exactly, command. right. It's like very good. I read the whole story. Imperatives. Right, I read the whole story. So again, right? That's just that's just a statement. I want to mm -hmm. buy a phone, but I don't have enough money. So we have how many sentences do we have here? Last one. Uh, yeah, last one. So we have two groups. Uh -huh. But how many sentences? Two. How many sentences? Two. Only two sentences. one. I oh, want no. to buy a phone, no, but I don't connect. have enough. Okay, the period, ah, okay. right? We have two oh, clauses. Okay, okay. Right, okay. two clauses, mm -hmm. and and are they both independent? Mm, yes. Both yes, are, they are right. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. Very good, very good, right? So that's the definition of an independent clause, right? So the grammatically speaking, you know, nothing can be missing from grammar, right? If you say because you know because she bought it yesterday, right? If you say because she bought it yesterday, right? We're we're missing more information in grammar, right? So now, a dependent clause. Who would like to help me read what a dependent clause is? Okay, a dependent clause. 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 Yes. A dependent clause cannot function on its own because it leaves an idea or two and unfinished. It also calls the subordinated clause. Dependent clauses help the independent clauses. Complete the sentence A dependent clause. Independent clause alone cannot for a complete sentence. Okay. That's, uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Okay. Dependent clause to help the independent clause to complete the sentence, right? A dependent clause alone cannot form a complete sentence. Exactly. Right? So they cannot form a complete sentence. Right? Uh, okay. Read what the, the other paragraph, please. Me or the somebody else? Me? Okay, that's right. right. Okay, the do the work of connecting the dependent clause to another clause to complete the sentence. In each of the dependent clause, the first word is the subordinate, subordinator. Subordinators included relative pronouns, subordinating conjunctions, and now class markers. Very good. Conjunctions. Not conjunctions. Not, con not conjunctions, mm -hmm. right? Conjunctions. Conjunction. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. So what is okay, so we got we got a few examples of in the of dependent clause, right? When I was dating Dana, I had an accident. So here, this is the independent clause, right? I had an accident. Yes. Yes. It's independent. Very good, right? This is the independent one, right? And the dependent one, the dependent one is when I was dating the... Dana. Dana, sorry. Right. So the thing, the thing, guys, is that if you say when I was dating Dana, right? If you say like that, we are, you know, it, it feels like we're missing more information, right? Mm -hmm. We are expecting right. something else. Very good. So if you said, I know the man who stole the watch, right? How many clauses do we have here? We have two clauses, two. one independent and another dependent. 
And right. the independent one is I know the man. I know the man, right? I know the man, right? He bought a car which was too expensive, right? <coughs> now, which one is the dependent one and which one is the independent one? So everything, everything that is underlined is dependent, but I want you to understand why they are dependent, right? If I said who stole the watch or which was too expensive or that he cannot do it, right? All of these, all of these are dependent clauses, right? Mm -hmm. All of these. So, okay, so we have, so we have, um, hold on guys. One sec. So, so we have, we have, um, um, he does not know where he was born, right? So that part of where he was born, right, is the independent clause. Mm -hmm. Because we still have a subject, we have a verb, but what we, what is it that we don't have? We don't have. Yes. What is it? What is it that we're we're missing here? What? Oh, we don't have a predicate in this case. Okay. Very good. Very good. Right. So we don't have. No, we're we're missing. Yeah, we're missing. No, it's a clause. We still have a predicate, but we're missing. You know. Um. More yeah, information sense. because yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It doesn't make sense, right? So I want I want you to notice something, guys. There is a reason why we call these, you know, subordinating conjunctions. Okay. Let me ask you something, okay? What is a subordinator? What do you what do you think about when you talk about subordination? Think about subordinators is who that, for example. Think about think about maybe maybe your girlfriend, right? Do you think that <laughs> you're a subordinate? <laughs> your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, think about your boss, right? Think about your boss. So Right. So uh, do you think that 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 you who, who's, the you know, who is who's above and who's below? My boss is above. OK, very mm -hmm. good. Right. So you got your boss. Right. You got your boss. OK. Okay, so, so he's here. Okay, he is here. And then, guys, you are here. Mm -hmm. Right? Crying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so this is you, you know, we're crying, right? Okay. And you try to look like you can do it, but you can't, right? <laughs> so anyways, that's why it's called subordinate, subordinate conjunctions, okay? Because your boss is independent. Mm -hmm. And you are dependent. So subordinate conjunctions will join an independent and independent conjunction, uh, an independent clause, to, a dependent clause together. Okay. okay, got it. So they are in different levels. Okay, so because they are in different levels, they are called subordinating conjunctions, right? Mm -hmm. So if I am independent, right? If I have, if I am independent, right? And then I join another independent clause. You know, let's go independent plus independent. Right? Mm -hmm. They are 
you know, they are at the same level, right? Same level. See? Yes. Same level. So this is like this is like a horizontal level, right? But if yeah. I have an independent plus a dependent one, right? This right is at a lower level. So let me let me mm -hmm. put it like this, okay? So let me put it like this. So that would be you know independent plus dependent, right? Okay. So if you do this, right? This would be right subordination, right? Different mm -hmm. level. So this is why you know when we have the same level, if we have two clauses that are that are in the same level, we will say right that this one right here would be coordinating. Okay, I'm right. So coordinating because there is coordination. Same level, yeah. right? It's a coordinating conjunction. Okay. And then we, if we have different levels, right? If we have a subordination, right, from different different levels, then we got subordinating conjunctions, right? Got it? And what are those subordinating okay. conjunctions, okay? All right? We can use subordinating conjunctions like here. For example, mm -hmm. when is acting like a subordinating conjunction, right? Yes. Right? Now, in the platform, if you go to the platform, you're going to see something called a relative plus, okay? And that's where we want to get at right now, okay? To talk about relative clauses, we need to talk about relative pronouns. But, all right, uh, however, do we have any questions so far? Mm, we're okay, I think. You're okay? All right. Very good. So, okay, guys. So, these right here are called relative pronouns. Okay? Why do we call them relative pronouns? Okay, because they are pronouns, okay? Now, if I say, guys, who are you? Is this a relative pronoun? Who are you? If we said, who are you? Is that is that is that a relative pronoun? Yes or no? This. Yes. No. <laughs> That's a WH word. But I'm learning. I'm mm -hmm. learning. It's okay, right? It's not. Why? Because what does a pronoun do, guys? What is the job of a pronoun? Acts like uh, a subject or an object. And in this case, a relative pronoun substitute a subject, for example. Okay, a relative, a relative pronoun substitutes a noun, okay? A noun, okay. Right, it substitutes a noun. That's that's what a relative pronoun does. Okay. Now a um. Okay, so if we say who are you, we're not doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore it's not a pronoun. So guys, a word is whatever you know, whatever you want it to be, as long as you know what the job of that word is. Okay. So if I if I'm asking a question like this, it's a wh word. But if I say yes. if I said um. If I said, you know, oh, uh, the woman who called yesterday, hold on. Mm -hmm. So the woman who called yesterday wants to buy the house. So if you said the woman who called yesterday wants to buy the house, okay. Now, 
how about this, okay? The woman who called yesterday wants to buy the house. Now, who called yesterday, right? This right here wants to buy the house. This right here, guys, this. Is that a WH word now? Basically, no, what, no right? Because I'm not asking a question, mm -hmm. right? What I'm doing, right? This is a pronoun now. Why? Because you can substitute this by she. Mm -hmm. Got it? She called yesterday, right? Right? We're talking about the woman, right? She called yesterday, you know, when wants to buy the house, right? So it's substituting a noun, okay? That's the reason why we do that. So if we if we go to the platform, for example, right? We uh, have different types of... We have different types of pronouns here. But let's see. Right. Are you are you seeing the platform? Am I sure? No, you're not sure. Okay, there you go. Right. So you're gonna see that the example says one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking, right? Now here, this part right here, right? That is the relative clause because it is a clause. But it's called a relative because it starts with a relative pronoun. A relative pronoun. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is optional. You can simply not say it, right? But this would be mm -hmm. this this would still be a relative clause, right? One thing okay. that I really miss is my mom's cooking, right? So you can use it as a subject or you can use it as an object. You can say my mom's cooking is one thing that I really miss, right? Why as a subject? Because it takes the first position in grammar. One thing that I really miss. All this phrase, guys, all this phrase is working as the subject of the sentence. Got it? Why? Got it. Do you remember what 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 the secret is, guys, for remembering if something is a noun? Cheyenne, remember? <laughs> you can say yes. Cheyenne, right? Cheyenne. Is my mom's cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the name of the new dish she's gonna prepare, right? So, again, something that I'd be nervous about is making new friends. So you can say, Cheyenne, Cheyenne, what? Cheyenne is making new friends. Exactly. See. So the whole phrase, guys, is being used as a subject. Why is it called and why is it called a relative clause? Because it starts with, or it contains a relative pronoun. Right. Check this out. The topic is called noun phrases containing relative clauses. Noun phrases, why? What is the noun phrase here? What is the noun phrase? What part is a noun? It's telling, hey, you know what? A phrase. What is a phrase, guys? It's just a group of words, right? Yeah. Yes or no? This is the first one. So this is telling you, hey, you know, hey, what group of words is working mm -hmm. as a noun. Okay, hey, you know what? Uh, the, yeah. the group of words that is working as a noun is something that I'd be nervous mm -hmm. about. Okay, and then it says containing relative clauses. Okay, so from, from this, we know that this is a noun phrase, right? So yep. from this phrase, which one is the relative clause? Oh, that that's easy. That's I'd be nervous about or that I'd be nervous about because it starts with a relative pronoun. Okay? okay, so that's why it's called, hey, noun phrases containing mm -hmm. a relative clause. Got it? Relative clause, yeah. Okay? Okay. So now, a it. noun, guys, can be two things. What can a noun be in grammar? Subject, subject or an object. It can be the subject or the object of the sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Right? It can be the subject or the object of the sentence, okay? So one thing I'd really miss is the subject of the sentence, right? Very good. I think you're getting it, guys, right? So it's taking the first position, right? And why is this an object? Because an object, guys, right, can also be a noun. So you're saying my mom's cooking is object, right? So take a look at this example. We can use Cheyenne instead of something that I'd be nervous about, right? So you can say Cheyenne yes. is making new friends. We can also say making new friends, making new friends is Cheyenne, right? Making new friends is Cheyenne. Okay. okay. Very good. So anyways, now Cheyenne will be taking the position of the object, right? 
So far, is it good? Yes, any questions? No, we're good. All right, no, so do, I understand. Me, do, do me a favor, okay? okay? As a group, okay, as a group, I want you to come up with five examples of noun phrases being used uh, of uh, relative clauses, right? Noun phrases containing relative clauses as an as a subject and as an object, okay? Okay. All right. So do it in. So come up with. Uh, so each of you come up with one example, okay? But but work together. But you all have to have different examples. Got it? Okay. All right. Very good. So I'll give you. 10 minutes, okay, so you can finish that. All right, let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Yes. 